Welcome once again inside LAFC Max and Vince podcast MLS Cup Thursday edition from glorious Eastern Los Angeles. Beautiful day, nice chill in the air, and uh, LAFC has uh, completed their training, and we're here. And we know MLS Cup arrives a lot, getting close. We're within forty-eight hours of of kicking off this sucker. You got to see the cup. I got to, yeah, I got to see it up close. Got what was it like? Gloves on. It's a really nice trophy. It's uh, it's got a, a lovely look to it. It looks like something that's very important. It's still a baby in comparison to the Stanley Cup, the America's Cup. By the way, I saw a really good uh, documentary about Australia winning the America's Cup, America's Cup in 1983 on Netflix. If you're looking for something to see, it, right, good it, segue here. They never won. No one had ever beat like the Americans because the Americans were cheating. I hate to say this as an <gasps> American. They Americans were not cheat? good sportsmen. Yeah, yeah. I looking back, you're gonna pull for the Australians. I guarantee you. Is there like one handler like the Stanley Cup? There's that guy. You, every time you see the uh, Stanley Cup, three you see like the, the same thing guy. Is this big. It's it's four feet tall. The Stanley Cup. No, the America's Cup is even bigger. No, no, but I'm uh, sorry. There's I'm one handler. I know he's been in the commercials. He's got. He came to ESPN. He was a bit. He was a bit uppity when I talked to him. And I was like, oh, uh, I go. Wait right, a minute. Now, You're about to hand this off to someone. They're going to bathe their children and drink prosecco out of it. I wonder, And now I can't even look at it. <laughs> I wanted to ask about MLS Cup. Is there one handler in the same way that there is for this Stanley There was a gentleman, uh, Sean, who was there, uh, did a wonderful job, and they brought it here in the, in the fleet of the motorcade of Audis, which Audi, a big sponsor, so uh, it's... Uh, How many it's, drinks yeah. can you fit in the MLS Cup, do you think? I think you could put in... Should we talk champagne? Let's yeah, see. yeah. Champagne's got a different buoyancy, a lot of bubbles. Yeah, you could do without... With, with the, the bubbles... Like, do I need the Magnum? It's wearing the off. Magnum bottle for it? Yeah, you would need no. You have you could probably have like five Magnum bottles in there. Oh, it's a lot of room, spacious. Good to know. I need this info for. Yeah, and look, it's been amazing. The engagement, uh, people are tuning in for this daily. Keep tuning in. You can you can watch uh, our episodes Tuesday and Wednesday. It is evergreen. You'll get a good idea. Joined by players again. We're going to be joined by Jordan Harvey, MLS ambassador, MLS legend. He'll be joining us as we're going to break down this game. Coaching extraordinaire. Yeah, this is the preview episode. This is where we're going to go hard on the soccer nerd stuff. Uh, and Jordan brings it from the get-go. Uh, does a really good job of explaining things. Yeah. I, and I'm going to say that's a testament to the work that he's done with you on the broadcast. Oh, excellent. Thank you. But one thing I, I think to really listen to what Jordan has to say is like all these teams in the sport, not just MLS, have an identity. And it's important when you're watching a game to see how they manifest that and why they do it a certain way. It, it makes the game so much more interesting. I'm not going to be a tactical nerd like Vince. Just kidding. Just kidding. But you know the people that are out there. And, they're, ah, da, 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 an and, they, and they watch with a formation chart. I know. There was no edge. Yeah. I, but we're on the same level with that. We enjoy seeing how teams play right. and how they get from point A to point B and how they resolve problems. And these two teams have distinct ways. Mm -hmm. And Jordan will be able to break that down. And so just take a listen. You'll really enjoy it. Well, just listen to the enthusiasm that he has. Because Jordan yeah, won't hide it when, when, a, when a game's like, he's like, eh not the best game yes we should go out there and win and there'll be some interesting topics but like from the get-go from minute one on this podcast he's like i'm really excited for this matchup there's so many things to talk about what do you guys want to talk about and he's just like we literally just laid out the carpet and just ran yeah by the way i was going to finish my thought we're at union station and i walked out there was like 40 media members right danny you were there you'd see it was insane like he's nodding over there outside of the camera so one of them was jim hill and i did an interview with jim hill i should be interviewing jim hill He's the most interesting guy in LA sports, and I got to do an interview and wax poetic. But people did he know who you were? Uh, did he? Yeah, yeah, he did. He did. A did he think you were? Hey, he said, "Hey, did Max, he think you were Steve?" No, no. He's like, "So, what, Coach? What are we doing?" You're like, no, "Coach, that's he a knew new it, one." And I asked the questions, and I thought we had some pretty good answers. But everyone's there. I went to. I was at the airport a few days ago. You could see the signage. I went to the Grove in uh, LA. Big signs everywhere. That's what happens for MLS Cup. But people are aware. So the vibes and are hats there. off to the local news because they can really drive it. This is a local news town, and people uh, start their day, end their day, watching the variety of channels. They're the highest rated shows uh, in LA on that, a regular I've basis. I've seen it on my uh, my local morning news is Fox, which is will have the game. And they've been talking about it every day. Good. That does shout not, out to Rogan Dino who that, pushes hard in that yes, newsroom. That does not always happen. So honestly, that is a big deal. That the lo even when TV stations have a game, sometimes the local news just goes one. It's like one little thing, like oh yeah, by the way, the game. No, every day they've had something to talk about. Something that I was asked a lot about, and we will talk about here, is transportation and 
it's happened here. We've always talked about this being a huge sports town. We're going to see it in living color with USC and LAFC almost crisscrossing games there. The USC game was there for some time, and then the LAFC, the MLS Cup, which we don't know was going to happen. It did happen. The USC game starts at 7.30. Mm -hmm. LAFC game starts at 1, so there's going to be some crossing. The big issue here, uh, no parking for LAFC, so there are, al al there are alternatives. A, as I'm going to do, I'm going to take the silver line mm -hmm. from down there. We do... Uh, Metro, you can go to metro.net or lafc.com slash MLS Cup to get all the timetables and destinations. You can park your car for free at Dodger Stadium and then come down. They'll shuttle you down and they'll shuttle you back. Or you can do ride share where they drop you off and pick you up at the same spot. So there are options. I encourage you to look at this as a unique circumstance to do it. You'll be well covered. If you drive to Dodger Stadium, you bring your car. Otherwise, leave your car at home. Unique's the right word. Yeah. I'm so tired. I'm sorry. I'm just so tired of people. I get it. You have a habit. You have this. And I understand. It has changed your habit. But the fact that there's still a multitude of ways to get there and they're offering things like go on public transportation. This was the point. This was the whole reason people wanted a stadium in downtown. If you wanted a, a stadium in the suburbs, okay, then maybe we never have this problem. But now we have this. And let's... I don't know. You know I don't know if you have to celebrate it, but like just embrace it. This embrace is, it. This it's, is a unique event that's... A, it's super unique by the other things. And I'll say this. I know you're upset about tailgating, but <laughs> while you can't park the floor your, is yours, while you can't park your cars, there is a certain subset of people that will be tailgating. They're USC football people. And I would think that there's going to be quite a few USC football people that also happen to be LFC fans. Uh, but you know what they are fans of more than anything? Beer, tacos, great food, fun times before games. Maybe you just link up with these people. You don't have to bring your car. Uh, some of these, yeah, by the way, some of these. This is the best situation ever. You don't even have to bring the food and drink. You might be able to. Some of these uh, UFC people in. have like these big double wide trailers and they really oh, I've been get a, at it. I've so, been a big game use USC tailgating. It's the best. I'm just saying bring a couple beers and bring some Masada and maybe just show up and throw some on the grill and, and trade stories with some people. And maybe we just use that. I mean, I'm, that's all I'm saying. There's going to be, I've been told, 55,000 USC fans. And you just said they're LAFC fans. They're not pulling for the Philadelphia Union. So it's yeah, going to be a Yeah, you think USC fans want anything Philly in their house? Absolutely not. They're going to be thrilled, I think, that that's going on next door. And then they'll hear cheers and go, what happened? And they'll LA won a title? Where do I sign up? These are Los Angelinos. Some are aware of LAFC. And for those that are not, what a great opportunity to give them a little taste from afar of LAFC. So there's a lot of positives nestled in there. And I think once you, you get it over and remember, you may not be able to blow it out before and have a great time, but you will afterwards because the game's going to be over at the latest 3.30, 4 o'clock. Yep. So enjoy your Saturday accordingly. You have all day, whatever happens. You will have uh, all you'll day. You'll be able to get home with plenty of time if you want to take that, that. All day and all night. And if you take public transportation, you don't have to worry about getting in trouble. Also, the stadium will be open earlier. I mean, look, yes. any any kind of event like this, anyways, you should be thinking about getting there one, two hours ahead. But on top of it, the stadium will be open earlier. 50% off food and drink specials. Drink specials. specials. From so 1030. 1030 to 1130. To 1130. And then 1130 on. So normally they open the stadium an hour and a half before. They're going to do it two and a half hours. So if you get there at 1030, you can have a nice brunch, lunch. Mm -hmm. And uh, Which again, a I couple would bevvies. I would recommend, even if the stadium wasn't doing specials, because... You know that area, and it's a big event. This is what we wanted. We wanted the big event. So you're going to have to change your, your uh, ritual just a little bit and just get there a little bit earlier. And you might get there earlier for your public transport, quite, <laughs> quite frankly. It's going to drive my way because it's gonna, you've got to anticipate the madness, not just the LAC game, but USC. You're going to be relieved, I think. So we'll get Jordan's thoughts uh, about where this game is won or lost. But I like to, what do you think? This is uh, – I can't put my finger on it, Vince. This is a I, I was pretty crystal clear with Austin. I thought did I f certainly felt we both felt they were going to beat the Galaxy. It was going to be a grind. We were right about it. This one's a little different. This is much this is a step up in class. Yeah, I think we can only base it on previous matchups and previous matchups have had goals. 10 yeah. goals total between these two in their last two matches in the regular season, of course. So finals as Giorgio would like to say, finals are supposed to be tight games. It's supposed to be not as they many are. goals. But He's I, right. Rivalry and final games are supposed to, but not with LAFC. But as we're going to talk about with Jordan, it's going to be strength on strength. So these teams are going to go at it. I don't think they're going to be cagey at all. And I think that results in goals because we've seen the way when these two styles come together, there's goals. Yeah. And it's a uh, point counterpoint between these two teams. Philly scores first as uh, LAFC will respond. And that's been the order of it in these 10 goals in these two games. Now, for me, I... I 
I, I'd love to sit here and say LAFC is going to win, but I'm not 100% convinced that's not a shot against LAFC because this is a reflection off of Philadelphia, who, by the way, have been peppering around this big game for a few years. And they've gotten a mm-hmm. little bit closer. They won the Supporter Shield in 2020, a year that you have to put a big asterisk by. 2021, they did it all, and then COVID hit them in the Eastern Conference Final, which uh, prevented them from really competing at the level they like to New York City FC. So this has been in their memory banks mm-hmm. for the last three years. They've been one of the elite teams. It's not like a, a flash of the pan got hot and got into the streak. They have earned this spot, much like LAFC to a lesser degree because of last season they didn't make the playoffs. But this is a very hungry team, which makes them dangerous. But the two things that, uh, when you're looking at a game that's so evenly matched, there's two things in LAFC's favor. Home field advantage, which, uh, remember, Philadelphia had two playoff games, both in Chester. So this is their first trip. Mm-hmm. So it's their first time they've had to really get out of their the comfort zone. The big variable zone. for them. The big variable. LAFC hasn't got out of that comfort zone. You could sense it here. It's been very comfortable as they've gotten into a routine. The other thing that I think LAFC has to lean into, and we'll see if it goes 90, 120 minutes, is the depth. And that is, a, a, I think, a, a, a good-sized advantage, whereas Philadelphia can go maybe two <laughs> deep. Uh, LAFC potentially could go four, even five deep, and specific guys to fill a position, defensively, midfield, mm-hmm. or attacker. Yeah, look, Philly has to travel, although they did get to come out here earlier, so they have gotten a chance to kind of acclimate to it. But travel is still important, so I do think that's important. Home field is definitely going to be important. Like we said, this game's going to look a little bit different because it's, remember, MLS is hosting this game. Although it's at bank, MLS is taking care of all these things, and we've already kind of talked a little bit about how that changes things. Although we still think the tenor and the sound of the game will be very much LAFC. So that, that'll that be an advantage. I just think back to those games again, though, the back-and-forth nature of them, so many goals, and Philly always scoring and then LAFC following it up. And if they can change that narrative to where it's LAFC scoring, who has... LAFC has not trailed at all in these playoffs, whereas Philly has, and they've dealt with it. They dealt with it against NYC, but those have been low-scoring affairs. While LAFC has rushed out, had a lead, yes, they got in tied, but never been behind. So if they can get that first goal, I think that really changes the tenor of those games. Do you want to score first? Did you see how they hammered New York City after they fell behind? Score They're first. Like, score first. Do not make changes on a set piece. Yeah, okay, fair enough. That's good. And Buster, I want to reiterate what Vince said he, too. I meant to say it a little bit earlier. When people are talking about why this isn't happening, why doesn't it feel like a regular LAFC game? It isn't. This is an MLS showpiece. So whoever hosted it has to uh, concede here to Major League Soccer, and for rightfully so. It is MLS Cup. Uh, MLS Cup playoff games, LAFC kind of d- dictate terms there. This is a little different. So keep that in mind when you see how things unfurl. We're going to keep going here. Very excited to have our good friend Jordan Harvey join us, embedded with his club. Take a listen to what he has to say. He will spell it out. You'll be very prepared for the big game on Saturday, and then you can Metro in and you're ready to rock inside LASC. MVP, rate, review, download, subscribe, tell a friend. Welcome back inside LAFC uh, MVP. We are here with LAFC original Jordan Harvey, uh, jack of all trades. you got a toolbox here. You're like... <laughs> Fix things around the building, whatever that must <laughs> in a soccer in a soccer form, obviously. Yeah, a little bit of everything. Um, it's been an awesome year to explore this, working with you and yeah. being able to be a part of these podcasts at time to time, being on the field, um, and we have an exciting week. This is awesome. This That's why we're having a daily yeah. podcast here. Yeah, we've been doing a podcast every day to check lead the, up to check the, final. the old ones. If you haven't checked them out, they're all there and they're all stand on their own, leading to the big game. This one's gonna be my favorite, though. Because this is the preview. This is where we can soccer nerd out, and that's why we have Jordan, because uh, he's he's been privy maybe to a few conversations. We won't. You don't have to share any of those, but we just we know that you love the game. We know how much you love the the tactical matchups and the battles. We know how much you love attacking fullbacks, which I f- believe we're going to have in this game. So I just really want to dive into this with you. And I think off the top, if you could, what would be like? How would you position this? Like, if you could get like. What is LAFC versus and what is Philly? If you could give them a couple words to put like what their ethos is or what you're, you know. Yeah, I thought we were going to go into the best 11 because that is very controversial. Have you guys uh, talked about this yet? It's all over Twitter. Okay, okay so we I'm, won't. I'm well, we'll that one clear. out. We'll steer clear. I did put my best 11 vote. Okay. I think I nailed it. We'll steer clear. Um, so much so much into something that no one really. Yeah, well, you talked about fullbacks and like Cheeky being one of those that has right. had probably one of the best Not in years. the best 11. Right. Not in the best, 11. Not the best 11. Yes. Um, contrasting styles. 
awesome matchup, and we had it early in the year. We covered it on the broadcast. Um, two teams that have a different system, but it's high energy, pressing, um, on the front foot, um, but completely different systems. And so I was in Philly at their inaugural season. It's completely shifted over the last two years um, to where it's more Red Bull style. And what I mean by that, and you said two words, but Red Bull style. No, 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 it's two words. Oh, Just do, yes, do your yes. thing. People love this explanation, yes. too. It's really yeah. valuable. So. And so what they like to do, they like to press. They like to lock it into one side. And when they win it, whether it's up the field, middle block, or in uh, the defensive third, they go. And they go fast. And they've got guys that just run towards the goal. It's not worrying about this methodical way of playing and breaking teams down on the ball. It's just going as fast as possible. And they have this ethos, using your term, uh, of getting to the goal, having an opportunity within like – it's like 10 seconds. Mm -hmm. So if you watch their games, you watch some of their goals, you can put a timer on it, and they're just going, and it's usually under 10, 15 seconds that they get an opportunity. Um, with that said, LAFC is more methodical, breaking teams down, trying to sustain pressure um, with the ball, without the ball, up the field. Uh, we obviously like to win the ball and go, but if the opportunity doesn't present itself, then it's possession, and it's maintaining uh, – the ball higher up the field, organizing defensively, offensive marking, this would be huge in this game. So there's this contrast of um, Philadelphia Union winning the ball and wanting to break. And LAFC, if they do maintain possession of, in the attacking third, it's going to be important. And we've talked about offensive marking a lot uh, for our center backs, our full backs, Ilya Sanchez, always having a plus one where uh, if LAFC loses the ball, they can control it, mm -hmm. win the ball back, or at least uh, break down uh, Philadelphia Union's attack. I wish we had a, a chalkboard because I'd love to show. Next season. Well, Next season we'll do a full chalkboard. Maybe we yeah. can visualize it here uh, and imagine, I guess, a, a, a prime position for Philadelphia's to turn LAFC over in their defensive end. Yes. So how would, that, how would LAFC react? Let's say uh, Chiqui Palacios loses the ball, Daniel Gazdag comes in, they're somewhere in midfield to their attacking third. How does LAFC react to something like that? It's, it's about, and it's a lot of the principles that you preach day in, day out. It's reacting. It's always, uh, you know, Terundolo says it, being a pessimist defensively. So always, uh, even when you have the ball, if it was to break down, if we were to lose the ball, where should you be? So Ryan Holling said if Chiqui Blasios has the ball, he shouldn't be all the way up the touchline uh, attacking. He should be tucked in, knowing that if – the ball turns over, he will be inside, closing down, and able to uh, win the ball back and be in a better position defensively. Um, the thing that I, I also wanted to touch on is just the rhythm of the game. Uh, like we said, we, we called this game a while back, and it's easy to uh, really break up the flow of a game. That's the easy part. It's hard to create a game. It's hard to mm -hmm. uh, have rhythm, have possession, and break team down uh, through passing and movement. Um, Philadelphia Union just wants to break up the game, stoppages, going. It's like, it's like there's no rhythm to this game. There wasn't the last time. That one ended 2-2, um, but it was really just disjointed and stoppages and guys were down, ball was out of bounds, flying. Uh, Wagner, we talked about, he has a lot of assists it's because when he wins it, he just launches it. Um, it launches it forward to Gazdog, all these guys running, um, and he gets a lot of assists that way. If Just he gets by it, lobbing it out. Yeah, there. Right, if he gets you. to the final third, he knows exactly what he's going to do. He's going to whip yeah. the ball in. So these guys are running in the box. So um, he's had a very productive game, and I don't mean that in a lazy sense of launching yeah. it forward. It's 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 a, its own method. It's not but a beautiful yeah. but if you have, a corner. No, but well, if it's you have two physical forwards already up top, already in positions to be dangerous, then you have Gazdog coming as a late runner. Yeah. Why wouldn't you send it there and just see what kind of chaos you can, you yeah, can I, th cause. I think Wagner could play in multiple systems but he does this one well he could he could play an LAFC system I'm sure and would adjust to the ways that we play um, because he's a good player and a top quality player but they don't ask him to play through the back right they just want him to put it forward as quickly as possible and then go so um, yeah just touching on the last game it was very disjointed and broken up and there was no rhythm to it so it's really uh up to LAFC to be able to manage those moments as well as try to get more control of the game and uh, build a rhythm. It's, I just wanted to follow on something he told us in a previous podcast about how, which is really a great point, and when I brought it up to people, they all agree, is that these two teams are going to be very honest to their styles. The way they play, you're going to see it. That's what makes it a compelling final. Do you see 
a time in this game where maybe there's an adjustment, where there may require adjustment go, hey, we're not going to play our way because it's this might be more effective under this because of this opponent? I, I think um, to answer that question, there's going to be moments, as I said, Philadelphia, it's easy to just – break up plays and, and make the game kind of stop, start, and no rhythm. So it's going to be important that LAFC, they can't, you know, be able to weather those storms and actually play similar to Philadelphia in moments. Mm -hmm. They're going to have to adjust. Um, if they, they uh, are able to get the ball down and have a rhythm, that's going to completely disjoint Philadelphia. So it's going to be, as you said, like this kind of uh, – those, this battle for these of, clues. Yeah, yeah. These little ba this battle of systems and how the game kind of unfolds. But really Philadelphia uh, is going to break up to just be launching it. LAFC is going to have to kind of handle that and manage it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's an exciting one. <laughs> I, I'm excited for it. As, as I want to, we'll talk about the matchups because I think that's where we're. we're yeah, I mean, look, I, I love what you said about creating a game. Um, and I think to Max's point about how can we visualize this, let's think back to that Austin game. And LAFC really laid out that game. They had the game plan both against the ball and with the ball, how they wanted to lay out the game. Now, you're saying with the way Philly wants to, I don't think, because that game had a rhythm. It had a flow. The ball was in play a lot throughout the game, even though there was turnovers here and there. We're not going to see that, I think. Uh, Austin likes to build. I don't think we're going to see that from Philly. So how can LAFC create the game that they want to without knowing that there's a structure in place that they can press in those moments and, and get in on a buildup. It's it's really recognizing uh, opportunities to go forward. And if those opportunities don't present themselves, not to settle like they did a lot of the time in this last game for outside shots or deep crosses that are into these big dudes, Elliot and Glessness, right? Mm -hmm. um, not to settle for these low probability moments um, to then possess the ball, maintain possession, and really just move it around and wait for that opportunity to present itself. That way, th defensively, you can really organize yourself so that if you lose the ball, you can win it right back and maintain possession and, and keep um, pressure on Philadelphia Union. If, if you settle for these, uh, these outside shots, it really just plays into Philadelphia's hands because then they get the ball back and then they just launch it forward again, right? And then you it, it's game starts to open up and it doesn't look anything like LAFC wants it to. I feel like when LAFC took on Philadelphia early in the season, that was something that Steve was trying to coax his team to do more because I remember him after a lot of matches saying, we got to finish runs. We can't settle for things. And I think maybe in this game more than any other game, it's got to be finish your actions because the worst thing we can do is turn it over. If it results sure. in a goal kick, that's fine because we can get back into shape. But we don't really want to get it into Blake's hands because he can then immediately launch it forward. Am I kind of right in that? Yeah, yeah. And, and those are the, you know, those outside shots being blocked and then it just bouncing around and then launching forward. These uh, crosses that aren't, as you've seen LAFC, getting to the end line, maybe crosses on the ground, two players running, uh, good movement in the box. Um, these early crosses that you see actually Wagner hit a lot of. Yeah. LAFC doesn't want to do that because if they're just launching it into the box, those are easy pickings for Elliot Glessness to then transition forward. And so um, it's finishing plays in the right way, though. Mm -hmm. Another narrative I heard, and people are, it's an MLS Cup final. Everyone's like, where are the star power? There's plenty of star I don't power. know how you, in, somebody even okay. says that. But then I, I can see what, <laughs> I, I, I see what they're thinking of when you, you look at these teams because collectively – Maybe there's not the guy who sticks above star power wise, but there's not a guy that you're like, okay, there's a weak spot. They're very collectively built, and that's why they are here, and so successful. I, I, they, they all complement each other. Both these teams. I think LAFC. With, people would think LAFC. Oh, they got the star power. They got these big names that are here. But generally, when you see them play, it's like I think this guy could win the game. He could certainly. He could be the most important player. Uh, when you see the buildup of the rosters, I mean, where, where is there a, is there a drop off? How consistent is it from this team? Certainly, as it looks like from the starting eleven and maybe the first two guys that come off the bench. Um, it's it's actually really interesting to see this Philadelphia Union team. Um, they've played the majority of the same guys the whole year. They've worked in um, some young guys like McGlynn, who you've seen uh, throughout the whole season, and then. Um, I believe it's Aronson and some some of these young guys have stepped up but the majority of the season has been the same guys and that is so difficult to do especially how they play which is high energy pressing um you know in all honesty you see Bedoya kind of uh 
has an injury and he's just trying to get these, through these games, a lot of it, is, lose a lot of it yeah, is because of the culmination of the whole season and the work that he's done um, throughout the whole season. And then you get into these later stages and it's hard to keep doing what they ask him to. Um, but that roster, um, I mean, if you're comparing the two, it's not as deep as LAFC is. Um, LAFC, you've seen a ton of different lineups, which you – you have concern, and we've talked about it a lot. You're like, man, it's another different lineup. But they've been able to yeah. just roll these lineups out because they have so much talent and so much depth, and the coaching staff's done a good job of keeping them all on the same page. But, um, yeah, Philadelphia Union, it's, it's, it's great to see a team that doesn't spend a lot of money. Um, you talk about star power. I, I mean, they have, what, four guys. If you count Jim Curtin as coach of the year, that's five in the best 11. So, like, as far as MLS goes, that's a lot of stars. Yeah. Um, so they've done it uh, all season long. It's a credit to them that they can continue to do it through the uh, postseason because it's a long, grueling year and a lot of minutes on these legs. So we've name-checked Kai Wagner. We've got Glesnes and Elliot. Yeah, um, so yeah. we're kind of going through the personnel. McGlynn, I say Aronson, Bedoya. Aronson. Bedoya. No, I'm just saying the guys yeah. we talked a little bit more about yeah. instead of just kind of um, – as you kind of look at this, where where is it? Where are the fears? Where are the touch points that both teams can kind of look at? I'm looking at someone like Martinez where, like, if he's allowed to do what he does, it's going to be a bad day for LAFC. But if LAFC is moving him side to side and he's having to maybe have some rash tackles, which he's been known to do one or two, that might mean that LAFC has been able to pull apart that diamond a little bit and find, find those half spaces, which you know LAFC loves to play through, and he's going to have to be so important. So where are you looking to see – Kind of, if the game happens in this way, I think it'll f f be well for LAFC or, or a problem for Philly. Just to your point right there, I think um, moving the ball quickly, uh, moving it side to side, playing around them, um, there are opportunities as the game goes on, maybe not early because they're going to be a tight unit and very compact. And the last game they were compact, I felt like, throughout the whole game, very disciplined. But as the game progresses and – LAFC continues to move it quickly, those gaps will open up. There will be midfielders that maybe cheat a little bit too wide, opening up gaps that you can find um, LAFC midfielders from the back line into the midfield. So um, look for LAFC to start off um, probably moving the ball very quickly, hopefully moving the ball very quickly, and then as the game progresses, gaps opening up. And then because of that quick movement with the ball, um, you'll be able to find some penetrating passes later on. How big is home field advantage here? And we, we know it may not look like your traditional LAFC game. It's going to be predominantly LAFC fans there, and they're going to, the teams are going to feel it. But looking at this playoff run, how big has it been? No travel. We spoke to Sebastian Ibiaga, and he said this was the best week leading into all singles. That was the best week of training we have had. When you look at everything and what Philadelphia have to challenge, and remember they played two home games as their, their first trip, uh, how big or, how, or maybe is it overblown a bit the home field advantage for this one? I don't think it's overblown at all. I'm, I'll, I'll even go back further to like preseason. Um, every preseason I've ever been with a club, we've traveled, which is a lot of travel. It's probably two weeks on the road, two stints of two weeks on the road, which is long and hard. LAFC, since I've been here and even this year, we've been local. So that is huge to just be at home, same routine, all of it. Fast forward to playoffs, being at home, same routine, um, you know, with the coaching staff and front office, they've made it really, uh, they put an emphasis on making sure that the players have their same routine this week. So whether that's uh, media coming in on a certain day, not blowing it out of proportion because it's MLS Cup, just kind of condensing it to one or two days, certain guys, um, and then just the day of the game, uh, not really uh, making it any different. Guys able to park in the same spots, get to the game at the right time and then just making it just it's not another game but making their um their feeling of this is comfortable it feels like a, a regular week right i mean maybe because there's no urgency to get up on a plane and travel it feels like that i know that's it's it not starts apple, it starts apple, up it top feels, though it yeah. starts up top with steve trundle yeah. i mean you've seen this guy from day one he hasn't been too high he hasn't been too low he's been right in the middle um very composed and it's no different this week well in that regard when you get into a final, when guys maybe start to think about, maybe I have to do something extra here. Maybe I have to change the way I do things. How important has Steve been in the message? Because we talk to guys and, and then also talking to you, they're like, Steve has one message that's been consistent throughout the year. And then from time to time, and not a lot, will just kind of sharply remind us these little things. 
And then other than that, we don't hear from him all that much and in a good way. So yeah. how important is that going into a final when you can be a little tight, uh, but you have the consistent presence? It's keeping consistent with the video, the timing of the video, the length of the video, the message that is uh, kind of passed down to the players, not overloading with an extra day just because it's MLS Cup, you know, mm -hmm. trusting the process that has gotten you here. Um, he does a great job of that. And, and yeah, I mean, MLS Cup can be daunting. It can be uh, – the whole playoffs can be overwhelming. But just keeping it simple and concise has been, you know, really great from the coaching staff and front office, just making sure that everything is um, – not overblown. Have you been in a moment where, like, it's a before final and, and coach, and you're like, I'll, I'll coach, tell you, we're going two hours yeah. on this video session. Like, I wasn't nervous before, but now I am. No, but I've had coaches, and this is just a different example, but it's it kind of rings true to this. It's like you're going into a game as a sub, and a coach going, all right, are you ready? Where are your shin guards? All right, here are the set pieces. It's like, oh, my God. Like, I'm going into the game. Let's relax. A better coach, you know, you'd be like, hey, man, how are you doing? Oh, you might want to get these on. Hey, let's take a look when you're ready. Like, just his demeanor really sets the tone with the group and a player just in a small moment like that or a week going into MLS Cup. How's been the week been for you? It's, uh, it's been pretty busy. <laughs> yeah, I know you haven't, but you've got quelled it. But, and I'll, I'll add to what we just talked about. We, we talked to the players about the trophy presentations. They weren't – Fire, fire oh, I love the trophy. I love it. They got it, it, raised very, it, put it down, and went right back in the locker room. So that kind of plays into this kind of like we're trying to recreate a regular week. But we know when you get out there and we're in L.A., and I feel it, and we talked about it ramping up. It's the Thursday of MLS Cup week. We're going to go. I'm going to go downtown. We'll, we'll see it. But you're also local. You're going to – Yeah. <laughs> your neighbors and all that talking about it. No, I think it's great. Um, I will talk about, like, the Western Conference final. Like, we talked about this before, and I was like – this is the quarterfinal, and you're like, no, this is the semifinal. I'm like, well, I don't see, like, as a player that's been in this league, like, Western Conference Final is great, but you don't, that's not what you're looking for, right. you know? So, like, I always, I was saying, well, it's the quarterfinal for me. You were, th you, I think we talked about it, and you were like, this is the semi, <laughs> then the final of Western, Western Conference, then I'm, the and I'm like, no, like this for me. This is the quarterfinal. So maybe they'll I think change that. that. Was, that was maybe the reaction that one day? I think yeah. that was the reaction, though. It was just uh, from from the players is like. This is great, but this isn't what we're here for. You know, let's let's. It's like the supporter shield. Uh, it goes all the way back it, to that. Yeah. One in Portland, and there was an amazing the, celebration, celebration. And then we came home, and we did it for the fans. But there wasn't this crazy celebration. It was like, all right, focus on the playoffs. In the same kind of vein, it's like, great, we won Western Conference championship. This is great, MLS Cup. Let's focus on that. There will be a big celebration if they win. Oh, of course. course. That we'll see a different level of celebration. Of Fingers crossed it's on Saturday. Can I ask you about Carlos? I, I don't think he's <laughs> been he's laughing over here. Yeah, of course. Well, because he's like, what are you going to say about it? Uh, well, because I, I, we did a show. We do a show Mondays after the thing. And I said, uh, round one, zero, because he had the chance. He didn't have to play. So zero minutes, round one. Round two, 77. Round three, 76. I'm just looking at it. And I'm like, and to your point, there's been able to be rotations. Um, and they've been important. I'm just looking at Carlos and I'm seeing the guy hasn't played 90 minutes yet in these playoffs. It's like the best possible scenario for a guy like him. And I'm thinking about the way he was able to take over a game like against Club America. Mm -hmm. um, and then on top of it, the way, and I don't think he's changed, but just the way he's been delivering his talks now and the way he's been speaking um, as a captain of the team, it's just been a little bit sharper maybe, or just a little bit like he's really like hitting, the, hitting all the right notes. Have you seen anything different from him? And do you feel that, he's going to be a little bit fresher possibly in this final than, than he might be in other playoff runs. Uh, yeah, of course. I, I was talking to John about it every kind of round and him coming off and um, not the conversation with John, but talking with other people and like, man, they're taking off Carlos Vela, you know, like we're not used to it in the later stages. He's our, you know, our, your DP, like what is going on there? And it's like, they have the depth to be able to do that and knowing that the level will still be high with the players that they're bringing on and knowing long term this is better for everyone as a whole, right? So you saw Chicho coming off too at moments mm -hmm. uh, throughout the playoffs. It's just that's the ability of – or that's the um, – having the depth is why you can do that and then be fresh in MLS Cups like this. Uh, I forget and your other and have a coach that you can buy into. Yes, as well. yes, yes. And as far as him off the field, I feel like he's been the same guy. I think he's he's definitely loosened up a bit mm -hmm. in terms of uh, not taking, uh, not that he took things seriously, but just being more open. 
I think maybe that's what it is because uh, it seems like his comments are less. Look, Carlos, I love you. Uh, most of your comments, his comments, are normally pretty stock. Um, but this, like, one thing that struck out to me, stuck out to me this year was like after he won the Sports Shield, he goes, "I know exactly what it feels like to win this and then not win." I feel like he never would have said that in the past and, and like opened that door. Um, but I feel like everyone you know, needed he's thinking to hear, about it too. I mean, I'm sure yeah. I'm sure he says it in the room. And you know, I always ask people because they're always like, "Well, he's not saying the right things." I go, "What matters more to you? What they say to the press or what they say in that room?" And you know, it's what they say in that room. But I'm just saying, it just it seems like he's just more not dialed in because, like I said, he always took it serious. I just there's something. It's just another level. It feels like with him. Yeah, I I, I will talk to like the stuff on the field. I think his game has changed quite a bit, and we've talked about it a lot in the broadcast. Mm-hmm. He's still producing though. You right. know, he's not it's been doing, all over these goal contributions yeah, and all over are, these playoffs. Yeah, still he's high still level. producing. He's not doing it the way he did in like 18, 19, um, one V ones and stuff like that. And taking guys on um, as many deep runs, he's still doing it uh, to then set up moments. He can come inside on the left foot. So um, he's still producing. Um, it's like any uh, player getting older in age, you have to recognize uh, wait, maybe what's coming down as far as attributes and then what you have as attributes and still take advantage of different moments. And he's done that really well. And he was involved. And I want to talk about set pieces because that's always been something that LAC looked like they were going to have a breakthrough on. They've had it in this postseason. Obviously, the Kellen corner for uh, Buwanga, eventually for Chicho, the game winner of the Galaxy, and then two corner kicks to open up against Austin FC. What have you seen in how they prioritize that. Clearly, it's working. They're being creative in those capacities as well. They've prioritized it all season, and Mark Dos Santos has kind of been the the leader in that way. Um, Also knowing that you'd be in the playoffs, and a lot of these big games all over the world, the biggest games are decided on set pieces. And so uh, to make it a priority throughout the whole season, they always did the plus minus that we've talked about, and they've always been in the plus, right? Mm -hmm. And so knowing that that work will pay dividends in the playoffs because it's these key moments because you're going to be going up against teams like Philadelphia that are very organized and aren't going to give you a lot, so it might come down to a key moment a key set piece. And Philadelphia very good offensively, defensively yeah. on the set pieces. So those are yeah. going to be, every time you see a corner free kick, I think you just want to really stop and see what's going on. Yeah, they were, I mean, to Jordan's point, they have been very good all season. I think in the top three set pieces and scoring set pieces. Mm-hmm. It went a little quiet towards the end of the season, but now, Max, to your point, they've really piled it on. And so the perfect time for it to come back into, into play. And the service, I mean, uh, between Carlos and Kellen, I'd love to, I mean, (laughs) I'll talk to the data guys and the stat guys, like the consistency of the placement of the service, I think from just my eye, um, it looks like it's been on the money or the most consistent that I've seen it in the time here. Look, when you can kick a ball and then hit it off Yuridi's face into the goal, I <laughs> yeah. mean, that's, yeah. that's, that's clever, it's, that's clever but design. It's, clever. But it's putting it in the right place, the right runners, and then causing kind of commotion in the box. No, of course. And knowing the guy just came on the field, so he may have not oh, been completely man. engaged because I was wa- people were trying to go, well, if it wasn't for that own goal, I go, but it happened and it was placed specifically. And Arudi has hurt us a lot, right? <laughs> he's come he's come with some goals with different that have really teams hurt too. us. Dallas, Portland. Yeah. Like he's come through. So I was like I, there was like a split second I felt for him, then I was like, ah. Yeah. I was like he's got it. I was he's like one, I, I was like one, I leaned over. I was like, but once again, Rudy puts the ball in the back of the net at the Yeah, bank. one way or so, That's what they were saying in the broadcast. You yeah. gotta feel bad for Max Yoruti. And I was like, eh. I mean we share the same name. We share the same name. But otherwise I was like, eh. <laughs> sorry. And then you went after Holling said at the end, I was like, no, no, no. That, 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 that got a little. We can get a fight for uh, it was it was uh, interesting to see like uh, eleven guys resign to their fate, but Rudy and Felipe being like, well, I'm going to take a chunk out of these guys. Like, guys, it's the finals next. Leave it, it leave it alone. It was uh, I I knew that would happen with Felipe. Yeah. Well, Max is going to uh, challenge him to a uh, MLS celebrity boxing match. He's got beef with Felipe. I would love to He'd watch. Kill that. me, wouldn't he? I would pay to watch that. Let's get let's get some matchups okay, for this card. Okay. We'll get someone for you, Jordan. So think about it. We'll get. <laughs> Ooh, I've got a few names. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we, got a, we got an episode for a podcast coming. <laughs> Celebrity death fights for everyone involved with LFC. <laughs> Pay per view extravaganza. We'll see you, man. I know we're excited about this. This is. I know we worked for this, and it's it's been fantastic, and it's going to be a really special Saturday. Yeah, we'll get predictions later. Jordan Harvey, LAFC original, and the man who makes this place click in many, many ways (laughs) from the kids on up.
Inside LAFC, Max and Vince podcast. We will be back again Friday as we get ready for the big game. Make sure you tune in Saturday. Full post game with 110 football. We'll be there. It's a great week. Soak up every second, and it goes by really fast. We'll see you soon. <laughs>